Hello, it's Monday the 27th of July and welcome to this abbreviated form of morning prayer. I'm Bruce Viney from St Stephen's. Let's begin with a time of silence as we focus on God our Father. And the special prayer for today. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. We now come to a time of confession. John writes, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, let's confess our sins. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, today's psalm encourage us to, to seek personal spiritual nourishment. So let's read Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Let's reflect on a moment, for a moment on those words and how the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. Now, if you can, please join with me and we'll say the words of the creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Now, our New Testament reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, verses 24 to 30. Chapter 22, 
verses 24 to 30. The argument amongst the disciples as to who is the greatest and Jesus's response. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was to be considered the greatest. And Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you're not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I'm among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And now we come to our prayers of intercession. So let's pray together. Father, we pray for our government that they may act wisely with intelligence and compassion. We pray that the government will listen to good advice and that the opposition will offer constructive criticism. In particular, we pray that you will guide them all in dealing with the international challenges relating to China and Russia. In Jesus' name, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those countries that are experiencing an increasing virus infection rate, such as the United States, India, Brazil, and many in sub-Saharan Africa. We ask that the leaders of these nations will be blessed by wisdom and courage to address the challenges in their countries. We know, Lord, that for the people in poorer nations, this virus will hit harder and with more devastating impact than for those of us lucky enough to be living in wealthier nations. We pray therefore those facing this virus without health care or government subsidies and for whom lockdown is impossible. In Jesus' name, Lord, please hear our prayer. Father, we ask for your church in this country that the COVID-19 problems may be seen as an opportunity to show your love in practical ways to those around us. Above all, we ask that you will send revival to this land, that your spirit will move in power, bringing many into your kingdom. As you said to Solomon, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, that I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. May we be those people. In Jesus' name, Father, please hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for those we know who suffer in body, in mind or in spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Be with those who care for them, giving them the skills and patience they need. In Jesus' name, Father, please hear our prayer. Amen. And let's conclude our prayers by joining together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And let's conclude by saying the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace. Have a wonderful day.